since the 2000s. So we're going to take all of them. This in, uh, includes, obviously, Amazing Spider-Man, for those that don't know, and the current Spider-Mans in the Marvel Universe. And we're excluding Venom, by the way. Honorable but, mention, Venom. But, honorable mention, Venom is here. And it's sort of part of that, but not really. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't fit into the... Uh, I mean, it, it's part of the Spider-Man universe, but it's not... Uh, it's there. It's it exists. There. It's, it's, it, it's, 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 a, it's its own thing. Yep. So anyways, um, starting at the, uh, our least favorite, um, what do we got, Adam? Uh, the least favorite, uh, for us and number whatever <laughs> is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, I, we put it as our least favorite because it took me three sittings to get through it. No kidding. Yeah. I oh, fell asleep man. once. Uh, the second time I tried watching it, I was just like, this isn't that great. Yeah. And then the third time, I I was like, well, I made it through it. I've seen it once, but even then, I, I just, I don't know, I wasn't into, like, the Hobgoblin character, and I was excited about, like, Electro, but then, like, after seeing it, I was like, eh, this wasn't a, what I thought. And then it yeah. just kind of felt like a lot going on. It tried to have a so, lot going on. Like, it tried setting up, like, too much all at yeah. once. And that was its biggest issue. That was its main downfall, which honestly kind of rolls into even the next one that we have yeah. on the list, too. Cause, well, we'll go ahead and skip to it. Cause yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man 3. So, that's kind of self-explanatory if you've ever seen it. There, there was just too much happening at once. Now, for me, though, I love the casting for Sandman. That guy was freaking perfect. And even, like, his character arc in the movie was pretty good. But, like, everything about Venom just it's, did yeah. not stand up to what I thought it would be. Yeah, you had Venom, Sandman, you had another Green Goblin. Like, yeah. that movie, it, it had the same thing as Amazing Spider-Man 2. It had way too much stuff going on for, like, one movie. Yeah. And it just kind of jumped around, and you're like... Yeah, I mean, sometimes this is the perfect example of, like, less is more. Yeah, well, I, mean, so, I mean, even the director, Sam Raimi, didn't like this because the studio kept pushing to get more and more villains yeah. and stuff into it, so... Uh, but, you know, for what it was at the time, too, because, I mean, this was before so much stuff started coming out. Yeah, before... It, I mean, for, like, juggling some of the characters it had, like, it didn't do terrible, but I think it's just kind of like... I don't know, it... Maybe if it had more time or split this into two parts, it could have worked. But, you know, for what it is right now, it's just jam-packed full of too much stuff. Uh, next on our list is uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, my biggest thing for this movie, um, I like the casting. I did like that. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't that great of a movie, I guess. And, like, it's not really that memorable. To me, no. at least. Uh, if you're going to reboot a franchise series, like, make it better than the other one, I guess. Yeah. Um, this Like, it didn't really improve on anything. The only thing that they did better than the original was they like, Andrew Garfield was a little bit more sarcastic, which is how Peter Parker is. Yeah. And then he didn't shoot webs out of his hands. He actually made web... Yeah, no, that's that's a good point, because that's actually one thing I did like about this when it first came out, um, was the fact that it was more like, it showed how smart he was yeah. to come up with, like, gadgets and stuff. And the, the one thing I think bothered me about this, because this movie, I think, was, like, 2011, 2012? But the, the CGI seemed really shoddy. Yeah. And I just rewatched this recently, because I wasn't sure if my son's seen it, because he's 10. And the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, wow, this is... It just does not look that great. <laughs> yeah. So CGI wasn't there, and like they had pretty much just retold the story of Spider-Man One, but gave him a different villain. Like it was the yeah. same exact thing. Like here's this scientist you look up to, and like oh he's the bad guy. Oh no. And I do like that they um, rather than have Mary Jane, they actually had Gwen Stacy. 
Yeah. I thought that was a pretty cool, like, conclusion to have, but, uh, like, nonetheless, though, I mean, it did feel very, like, the first one, but reworked. Yeah. So, hence why it's kind of in the middle towards the end of our yeah. countdown. So. Uh, the next few movies uh, are when they start getting good, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, these ones were just kind of meh. They were there. They exist. Uh, but Spider-Man Far From Home is next up on the list. Um, this is the follow-up movie to Avengers uh, Endgame, mm -hmm. and they kind of ex the cool thing I liked about that movie is it kind of explained like what happened to like the people that like were gone for yeah. five years and like how like the age difference now like somebody's younger brother is now their older brother because yeah. they were gone. It's it's kind of interesting. It had a lot of cool aspects to it. Um, Mysterio was pretty cool as yeah. the villain. Um, the only thing I didn't care for were, like, all the extras at the end of, like, um, like the footage of Peter Parker's identity being revealed. Oh, yeah. Um, spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think you're supposed to say before you get to yeah. that. Yeah. Well. Oh, well. If you haven't seen these movies, I don't know why you're watching the top ten. That's a good point. top however many Spider-Man's movies A certain number. Is. Well, we'll make sure to include that somewhere. Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty good movie. It was entertaining. It was fun. Yeah, and I actually think the one thing I liked most about it was the fact you went from having this grand universal scale threat to actually just kind of like a regular guy type threat who had a really clever way to like make, make it things seem yeah a lot it, bigger. It had a different feel to it, which was kind of refreshing after so many superhero movies coming out. That's like, oh my gosh, this galactic that's, thing's going on. It's the end of the world. Yeah. Better call for the Avengers, or just one of them. Whatever yeah. Yeah, Whatever we can afford for this movie. <laughs> but, you know, it's always nice seeing like another... Tom Holland, I think, is a fantastic Spider-Man. Yep. So, you know, seeing him in the role more than once is always a treat. So Yeah, he's, he's like the right... He was like the right age mm -hmm. um, for Spider-Man too. Like and when I'm charismatic. Looking, yeah. I mean, he, he fits that character so. And well. he's very passionate about that role too. Like when Sony and Disney were having their fallout and stuff. Like he got drunk and called up <laughs> yeah, like, CEOs yeah. and talked them into re reworking the deal. Whether that's like him actually had a piece of that or not, you know, it, I'd like to think he did. Yeah, even if he. Tried in some way, shape, or form, and <laughs> somewhat to that rumor. That's great. Yep. So, uh, next up on the list, and this could have been placed higher too. Um, Andy hasn't seen it all the way. Yeah, I'm but uh, Spider-Man into the Spider Verse. The one thing I can say though, I watched like 15 minutes of it, and um, that's about it. Oh, <laughs> the the animation style of the movie is very comic book heavy and yeah. like it's kind of hard on the eyes if you're not used to it so like you have to watch it and about halfway into the movie your eyes actually kind of like see it as an actual animation because like it's animated really weird but like the voiceovers like it's funny it's got a whole lot going on and like they crammed a lot of like villains and stuff into it so it's kind of like the amazing spider-man 2 and spider-man 3 but they pulled it off well so okay. like like, um, Dr. Octopus is in it, the Prowler, um, Kingpin, and they're, like, he's dealing with all these enemies and stuff, but then there's multiple Spider-Man, because, like, they open up a wormhole into, like, different, or, like, the multiverse type of thing, so, it's, it's a very entertaining movie, and, uh, it was, I, I really liked it, so. That's good. And he I needs to finish watching it. Yeah. It's on Netflix. Oh, okay, well, that's yeah, good. Yeah, so, I don't have to let you borrow it. Uh, next up, and this, you know, the one that started it all, yes. Spider-Man, with, uh, Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst, or Kristen Dunst, Kristen? 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 I think. I uh, maybe. Uh, Kirsten Dunst? But either way, um, I mean, maybe I like this because of nostalgia purposes, but, I mean, I feel like for the youth of comic book movies, because this would have been around the time X-Men came out. This is after, after X-Men. Yeah, it was so around X2, or is after X2, I think, I think it, it was by around X, before X3. Yeah, definitely before X3. It was before X2, I think. Because um, it came out, I remember <laughs> being very excited for this movie, and then it kept getting delayed because it takes place in New York, and at the time oh, yeah. there was... Uh, the World Trade Towers, and apparently I've heard 
there was a scene where Spider-Man caught a helicopter in between the I two. I heard that, too. So that, that was the rumor going around. There wasn't... The internet wasn't a big, huge thing back then. Like, you'd send emails, and, like, there was Flash games, which are going extinct at the end of this year, oh, which is depressing. Uh, but, yeah, so... Um, this was one of the first uh, major Marvel comic book movies, and this is what kind of relaunched, you know, Marvel doing a whole bunch of movies. Um, and the superhero genre in general, yeah, is really. It revitalized it. Um, and, you know, the casting, I think, was good. Because, you know, Tobey Maguire was kind of older, but I think he still fit the role pretty well. Yeah. And then even for... Um, he was the right the, amount of awkward. Yes, the right amount of awkward. And, uh... Uh, even the Green Goblin, the casting on that was freaking phenomenal too. Willem Dafoe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he looks so creepy as is. So to do that that particular <laughs> role was awesome. Yeah. And uh, even him playing kind of like having that split personality thing was really well done. And I, I mean, really, I think the movie hit it right on the head. You know, for the launching of a, a trilogy. Uh, second to. First on the list <laughs> is uh, Spider-Man, uh, Far oh, Homecoming. Homecoming, Homecoming. Yeah, Homecoming's the one. You know, obviously for good reason, as we kind of touched upon. You know, Tom Holland's awesome, and you know, to reboot a character, this was perfect. I think including Iron Man in it as kind of like a, a guidance or a mentor was yeah. great. Not and having to see Uncle Ben get murdered again. Yeah, for the that third was the time. <laughs> thank goodness. So, you know, it's it's great. I mean, I, I re there's really not anything bad to say about it, for at least for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I like that they had um, Michael Keaton in there as the Vulture. He fit that role really well. I like how they um, also intertwined it with, you know, the after events of the first Avengers movie and the technology and how, you know, really I could see people going out there and kind of, like, harvesting it for their own yeah, purposes. Yeah, harvesting Alien. And yeah. It, it's, it's great, so... Uh, it was a good movie. So, that leaves one left, and uh, you guys probably already know which one it is by process of elimination. Yeah. I couldn't find my DVD copy, so this is a VHS tape. What's a VHS? This is a VHS. What's it do? You put it in, and it plays a movie. That's Just nuts. like DVDs do. But, <laughs> unlike DVDs, it leaves, you leave the spot that you left off in. It's still there. Oh, yeah. So, I'm like... Yeah. Two-thirds through this movie. And then you have the unfortunate process of having to rewind it when you're done. Yeah. Or else you pull it out and you're like, dang it, i got to rewind it and wait. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll let you go first on this. Oh, I was just going to say Dr. Octopus was casted really great. Yep. Had a great story. Um, usually the sequels to comic book movies tend to be better because you don't have to go through the whole... Um, origin story. Oh yeah. Um, so they it has that going for him. Is like it's an established character. Here's the action. Here's your villain. Here's this stuff. And everything about the movie was just good. Like yeah. it was, it's like X two. Like um, you know they X men are established. Here's a villain. Here's what's going on. Here's the you know. And you know not only um, the casting of uh, Doc Ock, but um, it has the famous scene of. Uh, him stopping the train, which I feel like is kind of one of the best action sequences in a superhero movie, because, I mean, you're like, oh my gosh, like, this thing's flying down, he's fighting on it, and then, you know, it leaves off at the end, like, doing everything it can, putting himself in danger just to stop it, and yeah. it's kind of like, it's a rush watching that over yeah, and over again. it's insane. So, yeah, this movie is very well done, and, I mean, I was going to say, even on the... the other side of things, from what you said, sometimes it's hard to create a sequel that matches the first movie, too. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of movies that just drop the ball when it comes to the second in a trilogy of some sort. Yeah. So. Well, for, for superhero movies, it usually ends up working out where the second one tends to be better. That's it, hist Historically speaking, yeah. it is. Like, uh, if you go to, like, Batman movies, like, Batman Begins was good. But uh, Dark Knight Dark was Knights, so much better. Yeah. And then the trilogy always seems to at like throw too much at at it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. Because Dark Knight Rises, it just that tried to okay. do too much. It was good. It wasn't as good as Dark Knight. I, I like how we went to DC and a Marvel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, good example. For it's sure. it's examples because it's it's cinema, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's that's our list. Um. Let us know in the comments what yours would be. This? Oh, that's great. Good job. Cool. <laughs> uh, anyways.
anyways, let us know what else you'd like to see. If you maybe want us to rank a different series of movies or a different franchise or or, uh, or a movie. I don't know. We yeah. could talk about a movie for a while. Or video games or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah we haven't ranked video games. Well, if you just want to see us do stuff, let us know what stuff he wants to see us do. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, anyways, <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.